Hey, in this video, I'm talking about the top seven supplements for women's health. And I could talk about a whole wide variety of supplements. I've worked with a lot of women over the years and I've seen a lot of things really move the needle for them. These would be the top seven that I would say, but again, I could go into a lot of different things. And always, you know, when it comes to supplements, it's always good advice to work with your, your doctor to really customize the best plan for you. And also always find supplements that are third-party tested for purity and effectiveness. That's always a key thing that you wanna remember. A lot of things that you might find in a big box store or even online, um, you know, they're, they're, they're making false promises and oftentimes they actually are, are riddled with toxins and they don't even have the effective dose of the compounds that you're looking for. So really important that you're working with a professional brand, a professional label when it comes to any sort of supplements that you're utilizing. Now, let's talk about this zinc, number one. Zinc is really key for progesterone function. And for a lot of women, they're producing estrogen and the ratio of estrogen to progesterone is not where it's supposed to be. So they're supposed to produce a certain ratio of estrogen to progesterone and testosterone. Zinc is key for progesterone and testosterone production. For most women, they get an imbalance. We call that estrogen dominance. It doesn't necessarily mean they're producing too much estrogen. It just means that they have more estrogen than they have in the right ratio of progesterone and testosterone. And so zinc, very important for progesterone as well as testosterone levels. Also really important for our immune system in general, really important for skin health, thyroid health. So a lot of key factors there. So zinc, number two is magnesium. Magnesium we use for over 600 physiological processes in our body. And they say that magnesium is to our body what oil is to a car. The more we use our body, the more stress we're under, the more we're depleting magnesium. Most people in our society are magnesium deficient. And even people that are, that are supplementing with magnesium are gonna go through periods of time where they have enough and then they don't have enough and they're deficient. And so it's really key that we're supporting overall magnesium levels. I find that that is a game changer when it comes to different individuals, when it comes to their mental health, their mood, their uh, ability to think sharply and quickly, their ability to sleep well at night, rest and recover. Uh, for reducing pain and tightness in their body, I find that magnesium can be really helpful. Vitamin D, vitamin D is critical for overall immune health and hormone health and brain health. And so it's, it's really necessary for almost everything. We say that it's, vitamin D is incorrectly labeled. It shouldn't be called a vitamin, it should be called a pro-hormone because of the amount of functions that it helps to regulate. Most people are deficient in vitamin D. We want our vitamin D levels to be between 60 and 100 nanograms per milliliter. And if we're getting adequate sun exposure, right? We're getting a lot of our body in the sun um, on, a, on most days, we should be able to get our levels up in that range. But for most people, depending on where they're living or the amount of time they're spending outside, they're just not able to do that. And so um, supplementing with vitamin D then becomes critical. I recommend 1,000 international units per 25 pounds of body weight. So if you weigh 150 pounds, it would be roughly 6,000 international units of vitamin D that you would take always with meals. And you can spread it out if you want, 3,000 at one meal, 3,000 at the next, that's fine. But you always wanna take it with meals because it's a fat soluble nutrient. So that's key there. With zinc, I recommend, you know, it might be as small as 10 milligrams or maybe up to let's say 25 milligrams a day. If you're feeling ill, you're not feeling well, you might increase it up to let's say 25 milligrams twice a day uh, during that period of time. Okay, with magnesium, something like an extra 100 to 200 milligrams a day can be really helpful, but for many individuals, they need more, 400, 600, maybe even 1,000 milligrams a day before they really start to notice and experience positive changes. The way you know you're getting too much magnesium is you have laxative, you have loose stools, right? And so it acts as a laxative, and so you'll start to have loose stools, then you back off the magnesium a little bit, and your bowels should be regulated and be well formed. And so that's the way you know you're getting too much magnesium. Iron is a big one, especially for women, especially women that are menstruating. So many menstruating females are very low in iron. They can get that tested, or they can get their serum ferritin tested, which you wanna see up over 50, roughly between, let's say, 50 and 150 for their serum ferritin. If it's dropping lower, it's a sign they may need more iron. So they may need to increase the amount of red meat that they're consuming. And in some cases, we also may need to supplement with iron as well. So that's something important to consider. 
And along with iron, I would add in there amino acids and protein because most women are just not getting enough amino acids and protein. So you can consume it. You can consume more in a good quality protein powder like a, a grass-fed whey protein or a plant protein, a good organic plant protein that can provide more of these key amino acids. You can also take an amino acid supplement that has the essential amino acids in it that your body needs to undergo protein synthesis, muscle protein synthesis in the body and to upregulate the proteins in the body. The next one is milk thistle. I find that most women, they just feel better utilizing milk thistle. Milk thistle is really key for liver detoxification. It really helps to open up the bile ducts, helps with liver cell regeneration, helps the liver function better. It's also good for the gut. It's also good for kidneys, really supportive of all of our systems of our body, but in particular, the liver. And so most women I notice, they just feel better when they're using milk thistle. And then I like to tag that with ashwagandha. I find that most women just notice that they feel better with ashwagandha as well. It's an adaptogenic herb that um, helps to balance cortisol levels, stress hormones. It can help upregulate DHEA, which is a precursor for our sex hormone production. Um, ashwagandha has also been shown to help support thyroid health, uh, particularly with you know, individuals dealing with autoimmune thyroid or hypothyroidism in general. Ashwagandha has been shown to be very helpful there. Um, and then along with, with zinc, you know, I could also throw in selenium for thyroid health, particularly if you have Hashimoto's, Selenium has been shown, particularly a, a form of selenium called selenomethionine, has been shown to downregulate the uh, thyroid antibodies pretty significantly in doses ranging from 100 micrograms to up to 400 micrograms. So it can pretty significantly reduce um, the overall thyroid antibodies. And then B vitamins. B vitamins are really key. Some women are deficient in vitamin B12 or folate or B6. So Getting a good high quality multivitamin that has a kind of a blend of highly absorbable B vitamins like uh, methylfolate, methylcobalamin, which is the, the absorbable form of vitamin B12. Uh, for vitamin B6, we have P5P, pyridoxal 5 phosphate. That's the most absorbable and active form of vitamin B6. And so we want to make sure we're getting something with really good forms of these B vitamins that can be regularly used. Or, or use quickly in our body um, to upregulate those, those areas. And so that's key. So a good quality multivitamin can help cover the, the base for that. In some cases, we might need more isolation, like just a, a B12, a sublingual B12 in some cases, or a higher dose of folate, methylfolate, um, or vitamin B6, or sometimes a higher dose of B12, right? But for most people, this really covers the basis for most women. If we're supporting zinc, magnesium, vitamin D, some women need more iron, some don't. Most postmenopausal women don't need iron. They don't need to be actively looking for more iron. But most women that are menstruating, particularly if they have a heavier menstrual cycle, will need more iron. Most women do need protein and amino acids, so that's definitely something that you want to focus on. And then I find that milk thistle and ashwagandha are two good herbs that most women respond really, really well to. Again, everybody's unique and different. Perhaps you know one of these things you don't respond well to. Perhaps there's something you found that's been a game changer for you that I didn't talk about today. Hey, I'd love to hear about it. You know, I'm always learning and growing myself, and I always like to hear about unique case studies and unique responses individuals have. But these are the ones that I found to be the most powerful and the most effective for the majority of women. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out my channel, browse the various videos that I've done on similar topics, and also make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the bell button. That way you get notified whenever I put up a new video training. Thanks so much for being a part of our community here, and I really hope you enjoy the videos that we're putting out on a regular basis. Be blessed.